Reloading with plated bullets can save you money, can help you shoot in more places, and can help with the characteristics of your loaded ammunition. But what about load data? We're gonna cover that and more in this video. Gavin Gay here from ultimatereloader.com. I recently had the opportunity to sit down and talk with the folks from Barry's Manufacturing about reloading considerations for plated bullets. The conversation started with the question, what load data do I use for plated bullets? You've got hard cast lead data and you've got jacketed data. You don't frequently see plated load data. Well, we got into that discussion. I'm gonna cover all of that in this video, but I also learned some other things about plated bullets, what to look for specifically, and so on and so forth. But first, let's talk about Barry's Manufacturing. Barry's Manufacturing was founded in 1961. It is a third generation family USA business. They make their bullets in the USA. They're here in the USA, awesome stuff. Plated bullets are Barry's primary product offering, but they also offer other products like the QD500 vibratory tumbler that we just showed on the channel. So let's talk about plated bullets. Plated bullets offer many of the benefits of jacketed bullets, but at a lower price point. And one of the key things to note about plated bullets when you compare them to hard cast lead bullets or hybrid bullets that might have an exposed lead base, for instance, but are jacketed, is the fact that they encapsulate the lead. And if you're shooting indoors, this is a big factor. There are gases that are expelled when you shoot ammunition. If there's exposed lead, you're gonna get lead gas in the air. Some indoor ranges won't even let you shoot ammunition that features bullets that have exposed lead. So the encapsulation of the lead on the bullet is definitely an important factor. Also, there are certain characteristics like accuracy that can be improved compared to hard cast lead bullets when you have this plating. So plated bullets in general are preferred over hard cast lead bullets because they have improved characteristics. And they're also more affordable than jacketed bullets, but offer many of those same relative benefits. When I was talking to the folks at Barry's Manufacturing, there were two key considerations that they raised that you need to think about when you're loading ammunition with plated bullets. The first is staying under the velocity threshold. If you look at the Barry's Manufacturing product pages for bullets and you click on the considerations for loading, you're gonna see a maximum velocity listed. I'll go over that in more detail in just a moment. What happens if you go over that maximum velocity is the bullet stretches. And if you could think of this as like a dove bar and you stretch a dove bar, the chocolate on the outside will crack and separate. Just like that, I guess in a, in a more literal sense with ammunition, the plating will do the same thing. There's a soft core and there's a brittle exterior, which is the copper. And if there's too much stretching of the bullet, it will separate. When the bullet flies out the end of the barrel, the plating blows off, the bullet deforms, and you get bad accuracy and other issues. The other issue, which is related in terms of what the effect is, is over crimping. If you crimp a plated bullet too far, you will cause a ring cut all the way around the plating and there will be a separation there. When the bullet flies out the end of the barrel, the plating around that cut line will separate, blow off, and cause all sorts of problems. And if you look at the picture here, you can see what over crimping does to a plated bullet if the bullet is pulled and you can see that cut line. So what are these velocity ceilings? Barry's has fine control over the thickness of the plating and can vary their process to suit different applications. So for normal pistol bullets, for example, the maximum velocity is about 1,250 feet per second. And for applications like 9 millimeter or 45 ACP, that is plenty adequate. You're gonna be just below that, and that helps to keep the cost down. Okay, step up to a Magnum cartridge, like 44 Magnum. You need a little bit more velocity capability. They can turn up their process a little bit, plate those bullets a little bit thicker. That's gonna result in a maximum velocity of around 1,850 feet per second. And based on the bullet weights offered by Barry's, you're gonna be well under that, even with a full house 44 Magnum load, for instance. Stepping up to rifle is where things get interesting. Rifle bullets in general from Barry's Manufacturing have a velocity 
max ceiling of 2,000 feet per second. And obviously, that's something you're going to have to pay special attention to if you're running high-velocity rifle cartridges. So, where do we land with load data? In general, you can use jacketed load data for plated bullets as long as you stay under that velocity ceiling. And in talking with Barry's Manufacturing, the performance for a plated bullet with a particular load is usually very equivalent to the result that you'd get with a jacketed bullet. I did a quick experiment. I've got a standard load for 45 ACP that uses a 230 grain hollow point bullet and 6.0 grains of CFE pistol. This is my Hornady XTP load that I've been running for years. And I've just started using Barry's hybrid hollow point, which is also 230 grains and also a hollow point design. So I loaded up 20 rounds in two different magazines. I did 10 shots each to compare what the velocity would look like. And for the XTP load, we had an average velocity of 742.1 feet per second. With the Barry's hybrid hollow point, we had an average velocity of 750.5 feet per second. Same exact powder charge, and I was very careful with seating depth to make sure that I had the same volume under the base of the bullet. So I looked at the bullet overall length, I looked at the cartridge overall length to make sure we were seated to an equivalent space for the powder and the air inside the cartridge to make sure that pressures would be equivalent in terms of that volume and be basically an apples to apples comparison. As you can see, we've got less than 10 feet per second difference between the two, and that is a really good clear example of what this can look like. So again, you're gonna to wanna to be very careful with the rifle bullets. Let's say you're loading 308 Winchester with one of Barry's 30 caliber bullets. 308 Winchester can go up to, you know, in the 3,000 foot per second range. Obviously, that's gonna be well above the 2,000 foot per second max velocity for Barry's rifle plated bullets. So you want to use care there. And then if you're using a plated bullet in a pistol caliber, 357 Magnum, for example, and you've tested it in your revolver, it's fine. You're going to want to think about what would happen if you put that in a longer barrel 357 Magnum, like a lever gun, which I'm about to do here soon. And I can't wait for that. <laughs> All that to say, if you went over 1,850 feet per second and that's what it was listed at, you're going to want to make sure that you validate that. And if you have any issues, you know, that's something that you can look back at. So speaking of issues, there's two key issues that you're going to want to look for that translate to, hey, I'm in trouble here with my particular load. First, you're going to want to look for key holing. If you've got copper plating separation or other related issues, the bullet won't be stable and it's likely to keyhole on the target. Here I've got an example image that shows a rifle bullet keyholing. The, the bullet can hit sideways, which gives you essentially a silhouette hole on the target. If you've got pistol bullets, they're gonna look like you know enlarged ovals or, or similar shape. It's not gonna be that clean round hole that you're gonna expect. The other thing you can do with a test target at approximately 30 feet is look for copper flex around the bullet hole in the paper target. As the plating is blowing off, it will impact the target. I've seen this actually with 44 Magnum early in my reloading career when I didn't understand plated bullets. That is another sign that you've got issues and that's likely excessive velocity. So I hope this video will help you understand how to think about plated bullets and loads load data, testing and validation, and so on and so forth. I use Barry's plated bullets for a variety of applications. Here on the channel, you'll see a bunch of nine millimeter, a bunch of 45 ACP. What I like about these is that they're subsonic and I'm doing a lot of suppressed shooting. Speaking of suppressed shooting, Barry's 220 grain, 300 blackout subsonic bullet is totally awesome. You can see a 762 by 39 example here, as well as a 300 blackout example. I've got lots more features coming, including some totally killer lever gun stuff for both 357 Magnum and 3030. You're definitely going to want to see that. Those individual stories, I'll link to those in this story article. If you click on that first link in the video description, you can easily find that. My question for you is, what has your experience been with plated bullets, loads, 
and load data. Please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.